Hi folks, you have an exam question, you've got an essay to do, and it's about an indirect tax to solve negative exciality in production market failure. How do you draw this diagram? Well, we start with labeling the axis. It's a market failure based diagram, so it's price, costs, and benefits, as always, on the y axis, and just quantity is fine on the x axis. Once again, if you know the market that you're working with, apply on the axis. We start by drawing the negative externality in production diagram. Lots of videos on my channel to help you with that. So let's start with that. Negative externality in production. MSC is greater than MPC, i.e. to the left of MPC. So let's get all that drawn and labelled appropriately. Right, so this is the diagram you're familiar with, the curves labelled as such. Uh, I'm only going to label the private optimum for now. So let's label that. Q1 and P1 private optimum where MPC equals MPG. That's a good start on this diagram. Now you've got to think, okay? It's an indirect tax to solve this given problem. What does an indirect tax do? Well, it shifts the supply curve upwards, and the supply curve is our marginal private cost curve. So an indirect tax here will shift that curve upwards. And I'm going to make the assumption in this video that the tax is perfect and internalizes the negative externality perfectly. Which means that the MSC curve, because of the tax now being implemented, is going to equal, let's call it MPC plus tax. All right? So basically the tax now has shifted the MPC curve upwards perfectly to equal MSC. That's all you need to do. That's the only addition you need to put on this diagram to show that now a tax has been imposed here. Maybe a carbon tax, if there is a negative tax in production. Now, label your equilibrium. Now, it's up to you. Uh, I've already labeled the initial private optimum. If you want to label the social optimum now with stars again, you can do. If you want to do P, P2, Q2, you can do whatever you want. Okay, just to make it clear that we are now at the social optimum, I'm going to label that Q star. All right, so Q star and P star, because that is exactly the social optimum. But to show that a tax has been imposed and that there is a movement or a change in quantities of price, I'm going to draw these arrows. Now these arrows are quite important, right? so always stick them on to show the examiner you know that there has been a change in quantity and a change in price. That is the diagram done. There is no need to do anything extra. Even though you can do, there is no need to. That has done the job. Then we go, as we always do, to our mental checkers. Have we labelled our axes? Yes. Have we labelled our curves? Yes. And look how beautifully detailed that they are labelled. Have we labelled our equilibrium? Yes, we have. There is something on the axis here where there should be. Lovely. Have we made it clear that there has been a movement from the private optimum to the was a social optimum? Yes, we have made that very clear. Have we shown that the price has gone up from P1 to P star? We have made that clear because we've drawn this arrow. Right? If we didn't do the arrows, we might just think this is a bog standard market failure diagram. But the arrows imply that there is a policy here, that something has changed, which has meant that the quantity has reduced and the price has gone up. So we've shown the high price and we've shown the lower quantity back towards the social optimum. That's a mental thing. So always before you draw diagrams, check that you know what you're doing and double check that you've done it. Make sure your diagrams are drawn big in pencil and with a ruler so that they are presented beautifully. That's how you draw an indirect tax to solve negative anxiety in production. See you for the next video.